Hello and welcome to Psychology A-Level at Godalming College. Uh, firstly, let's introduce you to the department. So there are currently seven of us in the psychology team. Uh, we are one of the larger departments of the college. In your first year, you will have just one teacher uh, and then in your second year, your class will be split between two teachers. So a little bit about the course structure and how you will be assessed in psychology. Uh, it's a two-year linear course. This basically means that you will be assessed completely at the end of the two years. Um, it is a 100% exam-based course, so there's no coursework. Uh, there are three exam papers, and you will sit all three at the end of your second year, and the results of those three will determine your entire A-level grade. Each of these three papers will be two hours long and consist of 96 marks each, and it will be made up of a variety of types of questions, so multiple choice, all the way up to 16 mark essay questions. The content of the first two papers, so paper one and paper two, will be delivered to you in your first year, and then you will learn the paper three content in your second year. So a little bit more detail about what's on all the papers. So the paper one, as I mentioned, you'll be learning about this in your first year. So we look at things like memory, so how memory works. Uh, we may look at um, something called eyewitness testimony, so um, viewing kind of crime scenes and um, figuring out if memories can be distorted from crimes and whether they are reliable and accurate. We also look at attachment and attachment behaviour in babies, so how and why do we form attachments with our parents and what are the consequences if we fail to fill, uh, form a successful attachment. We also look at things like social influence, so what makes us conform, um, are we likely to just follow the views and behaviours of groups because they are the majority, um, so peer pressure, or what, what makes some people able to resist conformity and obedience as opposed to others. Um, finally, we look at psychopathology, so this is all about looking at abnormal behaviour, how we can define that, uh, and also looking at mental disorders as well, so things like depression, OCD, and also phobias. So a little bit of a taster into some of the paper one topics. Um, social influence, we have quite a few really famous influential studies um, of this topic. So one of the first ones is a study by someone called Milgram, and it is a famous electric shock study. So this study was about whether or not people would be willing to um, give what they think to be a real electric shock to a complete stranger purely because somebody in a lab coat has told them to do so. So someone of higher authority demanding them to do a task, how likely would they be to actually do it? So have a think about whether you would be one of those people that would be likely to actually succumb and uh, give the electric shock. Uh, there's another study by a psychologist called Ash, which looks at whether or not we're likely to conform if the rest of the group are saying a particular answer, even if we know the answer that they're saying to be wrong, and even if it's obviously wrong, are we just going to follow with the rest of the group um, because we want to fit in, we don't want to stand out. Um, and another study looks at whether or not people will conform to a specific role that they've been given, so there was a study by Zimbardo who allocated prisoners and guards and looked to see if people would adopt those behaviours that we know to be familiar with that particular role. Um, another taster into another paper one topic, so psychopathology. So we have to first define what we think is abnormal behaviour before we can actually look at some of the um, disorders such as depression, phobias and OCD. So these pictures may represent definitions of what we may use to consider being abnormal. So firstly, abnormality might be defined as being whether or not our behaviour is seen as rare in line with the national average. So statistically, is it a, an abnormally rare behaviour? We also might look at people's mental health and whether we think that they deviate from what's considered as an ideal, healthy mental well-being. Or this last picture here, whether or not someone's behaviour is seen as abnormal because it's just not normal in line with the rest of societal norms. 
looking at the paper two then, so again this is content that you would learn in your first year. So the first topic is approaches. So this is basically the foundation of psychology, looking at behaviours from all different angles, different perspectives. For example, do we think that behaviour is determined by biological factors, things like genetics? Or do we think that our behaviour results from learning and from our environment and our experiences? We also look at biopsychology, so this is quite scientific. Anything to do with biological structures or processes within our body that can influence our behaviour. And then the last paper two topic is research methods. So this is really the sort of mathematical element, um, again quite scientific, looking at how we might study human behaviour from an experimental point of view and also using non-experimental methods. And then finally looking at the results of these studies and working out whether or not they would appear to be statistically significant. So looking at data handling and analysis as well. A little bit about biopsychology. So as I mentioned, this is one of the most scientific areas of the course. We may look at things like brain functions, brain scanning techniques, uh, looking at what parts of the brain may be responsible for certain behaviours. So for example, if you were to injure a particular part of the brain, what behaviours may you expect or what functions may you expect to be affected as a result of this? So looking at mapping out all the different functions across the brain. A little insight to research methods in a bit more detail then. So looking at different ways to study behaviour, you may opt for more scientific type methods such as lab experiments, so using artificial um, settings to monitor and study behaviour. You might just ask somebody about um, their experiences and how they behave in a questionnaire or an interview. Or you might do a bit more of an in-depth analysis and look at one person as a unique individual and study their behaviours as a one-off case. Okay, There are pros and cons to each of these methods, so you'll be looking at why uh, potentially a lab experiment might not be as good as a real-life study in the field or why asking somebody about their behaviour might seem a little bit subjective and potentially they may lie about their behaviour. So pros and cons to all of these methods. Um, finally then the paper three content, this is what you'll be learning about in your second year. Um, so aggression, so looking at what makes people aggressive or act aggressively. Um, schizophrenia, so another mental disorder that we look at in more detail in the second year. Um, how to explain it and also what the treatments are for this disorder. We also look at gender, um, so things like sex role stereotypes or androgyny, looking at atypical gender development, um, media and gender, and then lastly issues and debates. So issues and debates is really the kind of famous arguments in psychology, so you will have heard of things like the nature versus nurture debate, um, but also looking at ethical implications, so things that maybe research may be causing offence to certain groups of people. So looking at the real kind of issues um, in psychology. Uh, what you might expect from a typical psychology lesson. So we tend to set quite a lot of prep tasks. You may be asked to discuss what you found out from previous preparations with a partner or maybe doing a little quiz. We like to use the mini whiteboards quite a lot um, and even the occasional competitive kahoot, which is always fun. We do a lot of group work in psychology, so it might be that you're asked to get into groups and do a presentation or to discuss or to form a debate. Um, so lots of fun group activities to work collaborati collaboratively with others. Um, some of the sections uh, would be teacher led, uh, especially on the more kind of tricky uh, skills and content. We may use PowerPoints, video links, um, diagrams on the whiteboard, Q and A's and things like that. Uh, and then we also do quite a lot of in-lesson exam practice questions and assessments um, to make sure that you are all understanding everything and making good progress. Uh, in terms of assessment, so um, a typical thing that we ask you to do is create revision summaries of topics um, which can help um, provide you with a really good revision resource. Um, we do regular benchmarks in psychology at the end of topics and these will also contribute towards your predicted grades. So make sure you always try really hard on these benchmarks because they can affect your grades. Um, 
one-to-one -one discussions. So uh, we will discuss your progress with you in a one-to-one -one setting, um, set you some targets and also look at your goals. Um, and then as a support system, we've got really good lunchtime workshops that are available for you to help you kind of make progress and develop your knowledge and skills and also looking at exam technique as well. In terms of progression after in psychology, lots of different things that you could be getting into, forensic psychology, sport and exercise psychology, lots of different pathways that open up to you from taking psychology as an A-level and studying it further at university and after as well. If there's any more um, questions that you have or things that you um, want to find out, you can download the course preparation leaflets from the Godalming Online website. Uh, we're also going to be monitoring our emails in the next couple of weeks, so if you did have any more specific questions, don't hesitate to ask us. We'll be happy to help. Um, so thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to meeting you all in September.